thought I'd do another RV video. I'm trying to use my phone, but the front camera doesn't have that image stabilization stuff. So anyway, you can see my little Winnebago view behind me. So we've made several trips in this view and we really like it, but we're gonna trade it in on a fifth wheel. More videos coming about that, but I thought I would just show a few quick modifications I've made, especially on the electrical system. For those of you that have a view and you're frustrated, now I will tell you that probably unless you're, you know, I'm pretty comfortable around electrical. I've done some remodeling and I've done quite a bit of, you know, house wiring and things like that. Uh, this is still a little bit intimidating to me and I, I learned a few things about battery cables and inverters. So I'll kind of pass that along. And if you want to do something like this, you might want to get a RV tech to do it for you, maybe a mobile tech. But anyway, let me kind of go over those real quick. Uh, so the first thing I did was I upgraded the batteries to a couple of lithium batteries. The brand is Lion. They're quite small. They're about a third the weight of the original batteries. I went ahead and put them into the uh, battery bay. I was able to fit them and the current battery cables uh, worked fine. As I got working on this project, I found out the battery cables are sort of an issue with this upgrade and that's the step I didn't get to before we decided to trade it in. I'll talk about that in a little bit more. So one thing I don't like about the La Ion batteries is there's really no good way to know what their charge level is. Um, there's no Bluetooth, uh, no connection, and uh, there might be ways around that by just reading the voltage, but one problem with lithium batteries is they really don't show a voltage drop as they uh, lose uh, energy. The only way to really tell how uh, what their charge level is, is to actually open up the stairs. There's a little button on each one that'll show you 20%, 40%. And if I were to do it again, I would probably look at the Renogy Lithium or one of the other ones that has uh, Bluetooth connectivity or at least a monitoring system so you can actually know what the charge of the batteries are. Second thing I did is I put a 3000 watt Renogy Pure Sine Wave Inverter in. One of my goals was to be able to actually run the microwave off the battery if we were boondocking. Right now, the current way the view's built is that it's got a really small inverter, and it only sends power to a couple of the plugs inside the coach, and you really can't run much other than, you can run the furnace and you know some critical things. Uh, you can't run the fridge. The fridge will only run off the engine battery when the engine's running, but in battery mode, the fridge doesn't run off a battery except when the engine's running. <clears throat> so my idea was that I can get enough AC in there that I can run anything I want except for maybe the air conditioner stuff. Now, if I were to do it again, I would probably only put a 2000 watt inverter in because I don't think I would ever want to run the air conditioner. And right now, the way it's built, if I pull too much wattage, I'll blow the cable or the fuse that protects the battery cables. Now, I'll talk about how you can avoid that if you're into this project, but let me just show you where I put the inverter. I was pretty much able to mount it up underneath the view. If I can get down here and, and get up there and show you up on the ceiling, right where the other inverter was. Now you'll notice I also have a panel right here. And the reason for that is uh, what I did is I ran a 12 gauge wire from that back to the main panel in the back uh, under the bed. And I tied that into the AC out of the inverter and then I reworked the panel in the back, and those are my next upgrades, so that the inverter supplied power to the entire coach back through that panel. Well, the old inverter has a transfer switch in it, and there's AC power coming into that bay from the panel, and if you have shore power or generator running, that internal transfer switch of that other inverter would route that power through to the plugs that it normally powers, so you don't need the inverter on to actually get power to those plugs. When you turn the shore power off, that inverter, then uh, the relay switch inside of that kicks in and it sends power to those plugs. Well, because I'm powering all of the plugs, I just wired those uh, plugs that were going through the inverter directly back through to the panel because I really didn't need that transfer switch anymore. For the next grade, let's go back to the power bay. One problem with the view as it's delivered is if you want to switch from shore power to generator power, you have to go into the battery bay and you have to actually plug the 
shore power plug in into the generator box. And you can see here what I've done is I've added this transfer switch. This wasn't very expensive. It's a little hard to put in just because it's so tight. But now what happens is when I have, when I turn the generator on, it will automatically activate that transfer switch and send power to the coach. So I get either shore power or generator power through that transfer switch over to the panel now. I don't have to go outside and plug that cord into that generator thing. I know some people just, when they unplug it from shore power, just automatically plug it in. Not a bad practice because then it's always gonna be available without doing anything. Uh, I didn't do that. I just thought this was a better solution. Almost all RVs have a transfer switch like that in them. Uh, so the last thing I did that kind of ties all this together was underneath the bed. Let me just pop this open. What I did is I added another transfer switch. I've got the cover that I built off. I built a little box to protect this, but the transfer switch on the right receives power from either the generator or shore power, whichever is operating. It also receives power from the inverter. If there's no generator or shore power, then the inverter uh, powers on, then it'll supply that power to the whole coach. That's wired from the inverter into the transfer switch. So you've got two inputs, inverter or generator shore. If the generator or the shore power is on, that activates and uh, closes that switch and supplies power that way and it disables the inverter power. So that way I can have AC power to the entire coach from any of my three sources without actually having to deal with any manual switches or anything else. Now, one last thing I have to talk about in that process is you'll notice next to that is a, a breaker. And one thing I realize you don't want to let me get out of the sun here. Ooh, bright. So when AC power is coming in from the inverter, you don't want that to turn around and go back to the plug that powers the converter, which is what charges the battery. One other thing I did is I changed that converter out to a 9100 Progressive Dynamics, which is designed for lithium batteries. What I did was I took the power from the panel underneath the bed out and ran it into its own breaker. And I tied the input of that from the power coming from the shore generator transfer switch. So that uh, power, that power converter that charges the batteries only receives power if there's shore power or generator power. But once you switch to inverter power, that plug is no longer powered and that uh, charger is disactivated. One last thing I might mention is as far as charging the batteries, uh, lithium batteries, a lot of people say you need to put a DC to DC charger on that. And I watched a video uh, by an engineer whose name is called On the Road with Ron. He does a lot of really, really good Winnebago modification videos. Uh, great channel. Uh, and he talks about the specs of the Winnebago coach, which is on a Sprinter 3500 chassis. The alternator on the Sprinter is rated at uh, 180 amps when running at 2000 RPM. And the coach itself, the chassis itself is only gonna pull about 50 amps. So there's more than enough power to charge those batteries through the converter without worrying about a DC to DC converter. The reason you put those in is you don't wanna burn your alternator up by pulling too much power out of the uh, battery or out of the alternator. I've been running it for a while, no problem, charging my batteries from dead to full on the just driving the coach a couple times and i'm ron has said the same thing you know take that you know it, i guess best practice might be to put one of those in but right now i just feel like it probably isn't necessary and if you want to do that you can research that on youtube anyway with these modifications my coach works really well the last thing i should probably mention is the problem with the 3000 watt converter or inverter and the battery cables. One thing I had no idea is that the battery cables have to get thicker and thicker based on how far the battery is from the inverter. Now right now I think my battery cable length is around six to seven feet and according to Battleborn that requires a triple lot cable. Mine are actually an O2 cable I think so um, we're talking a cable that's a magnitude of thickness greater. I also have a 150 amp 
uh, fuse in those battery cables and that fuse is designed to keep the battery cables from blowing up or burning up if you pull too much power through those cables that fuse will blow and I blew the fuse had no idea about this my eventual solution was going to be to add two more of those batteries and move them into the bay underneath the inverter so I would sh dramatically shorten the distance of the battery cable to the inverter. The other advantage of moving those batteries into that bay is the lithium batteries when they get to about 27 degrees you can't charge them anymore. Now not a real big problem uh, but if, if where they're out now they're totally exposed to the air you could inc enclose that area and, and warm it up but if they're in that area underneath the cabinet it's quite easy to probably get some a little bit of warm air down in there. The inverter itself is going to supply warm air to that compartment and probably even on a really really cold night keep them uh, warm enough so anyway that was kind of my plan decided to buy a fifth wheel instead I'll have a few videos about that the one thing I'll mention the one problem I had with the Renogy uh, the remote panel which you wire in above the fridge I wanted to use the same uh, phone cable that the uh, other inverter had but I found out that other inverter the cable wires were connected backwards of a normal one. Now I actually had to clip the wire off and put a new connector on and reverse it to get it to work. So that would be a problem if you're trying to run that remote. You either have to pull the wire that comes with the, uh, the Renogy remote through or you're gonna have to cut that off and, and uh, reverse those connections. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, like I said, I'm not an engineer and I'm not an expert. Do, do your own research and make sure that I didn't, you know, that you agree with what I did. And like I said, if you're uncomfortable with the wiring, it wasn't real difficult, but if you're uncomfortable with it, you might want to you know, hire a tech or take an RV dealer and do something similar to put those transfer switches in and rewire everything. Anyway, hope this was helpful. Ask questions if you want. I'm just trying to pass some information on. Uh, you know, I kind of had fun doing the project. It was probably a little more than I really should have handled, but I'm pretty comfortable with it and it works very reliably. I've had no issues now for quite a while. And I thought I'd make this video before this baby goes to the dealer and I have my new fifth wheel. See ya.